think about the changes that inevitably have to come, sometimes changes that are forced on you, sometimes it changes that you have no control of, or sometimes changes you want to make uh, because of circumstance. And as we, we think about those, I want you to think about the follow-up with that. Does God make changes? Does God make changes? And so dwell on that as uh, we prepare. So uh, I want to make a special welcome and shout out to uh, all the members of the Nino family with us this today. Uh, today. Uh, they are remembering uh, the birthdays of their parents, which were just this past week. And so uh, we celebrate the life of Elmer and Polly Nino with them today. So let's take a moment and greet each other. Stand, welcome with those around you, wish each other peace of the Lord. So our opening hymn today is probably a hymn that's a little bit unfamiliar, but it's one that I'd like you to learn. I think you'll enjoy it once you get to know it, and it is entitled, Not Unto Us. Let us stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart 
and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Let's pause for a moment, reflect on God's word, and examine our hearts and minds, and confess our sins to our Father in heaven, personally and individually. Oh, almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We'll join in reading our intro responsibly, half verse by half verse, and join in together in the glory be to the Father, the sung version. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And blessing be on your people. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me. My glory is I cried aloud to the Lord. And he me I lay down and slept. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people to the Lord. We join in the curious. Pray together the collect of the day. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the scripture reading. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday in Lent is from Isaiah, chapter 43. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. This is the word of the Lord.
O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. The epistle this morning is from Philippians chapter 3. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that, I've al- not that I have already obtained this, for I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Be Let us stand for the reading holy of the Holy Gospel and we join in the verse to introduce it. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel this morning is according to St. Luke the 20th chapter. Jesus began to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard and let it out to tenants and went into another country for a long while. When the time came, he sent a servant to the tenants so that they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent another servant, but they also beat and treated him shapefully and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent yet a third. This one also they wounded and cast out. The owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Let us kill him so that the inheritance may be ours. And they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, Surely not. But he looked directly at them and said, What then is this that is written? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. The scribes and the chief priests sought to lay hands on him at that very hour, for they perceived that he had told this parable against them. But they feared the people. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be sincere, that they might catch him in something he said, so as to deliver him up to the authority and jurisdiction of the governor. This is the gospel of the Lord. Speak to me, O Christ. And let us join and confess our Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated, and the children are welcomed forward for children's message.
Great. Good morning. I think, yeah, I think we have some more coming. But as people are making their way down, I want you to think about spring, right? I know that we kind of got a glimpse of spring, and now maybe it's a little bit colder again. But the change from winter to spring brings about a lot of things, right? Now, one thing, I don't know if you've heard of this before, but one thing that's pretty common is spring cleaning. Have you heard of that? Spring cleaning, maybe? Okay, a couple of us, right? I, I, I wouldn't doubt if you guys haven't heard of it, right? Because maybe you're not the ones doing the spring cleaning, which is okay. But spring cleaning typically is when, you know, hey, spring comes and you've kind of been cooped inside for all of winter. And finally, you're like, oh, it's getting warm out, but I need to, I just need to clear out things, right? Get rid of some old things. I need to just clean my house, right? I've been just cooped up inside for all of winter, right? So that's one thing that happens around springtime. Another thing that happens around springtime, which we're kind of seeing, not a lot of yet, but, which is why I brought this, we have, now, I have fake ones because, yes, they aren't all in bloom yet, but we have uh, flowers, right? We have plants and flowers that finally start growing again in spring, right? And what happened to all the old plants and flowers? Anybody? Yeah, they died, right? They went away. They, they died, right? Some, some of them do come back year after year. They grow new leaves or things like that. But a lot of them die, and then, hey, we get, we get new ones, right? We get new plants. We get new flowers. They sprout up, right? So all these things, right, a lot of things happen for spring, right? All these changes, right? It's going from cold and, you know, dreary, hopefully to warmer weather where, you know, everyone likes to be outside more. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm finally seeing people outside again, right? I'm finally seeing uh, people do things. There's a whole bunch of life added around, right? And same thing with this, new life, right? So in the Old Testament, we hear about this, and I want to read the uh, exact verses here that you might have missed, right? It said, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old, right? Okay, so we got the old things, right? Out with the old, in with the new, right? And then it also says in here that, hey, for I give water in the desert, rivers in the, in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise, right? And he also says, behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, right? It even said spring in there, right? Springs forth, right? So we got the new and we had the old, right? So out with the old, in with the new is kind of the theme of spring, right? And also, as we heard in the uh, Old Testament lesson, it says it in there, but also it is the theme of baptism. If you want to look right over here to the baptismal font, right? And so in our baptism... We have out with the old, in with the new, right? Our old sinful nature, we want that gone, right? We want that drowned out. We want that to go away. And then what do we also receive in baptism? New life, right? We have new life in baptism. And we kind of hear that in the Bible verses as well. As it talks about, it gave us a little reference to uh, Moses and the Exodus and them going through the Red Sea, drowning out old evil Pharaoh and all those people coming after them. And then, hey, we also hear about the waters bringing forth new life, just as they do with plants in springtime as well, right? Thank you. So we have all these changes coming about with spring, right? And you can look for them. Does anyone else have other changes that you see around springtime? What do you, what do you see around springtime? New grass, right? Yep, goes along, with the, goes along with the plants. The grass, you can finally see it again, right? It's not covered, and eventually, it'll hopefully get green again, right? Anyone else have changes that you guys see during spring? You see some others? Yeah, the flowers, right? Yeah, the flowers, we see all the flowers blooming again, and that's really awesome, right? It's really awesome to see all the new plant life. 
So you guys can remember, as spring continues to come upon us, right, you can remember that, hey, sometimes we go out with the old, in with the new. We see all the new life, and that is the same as what happens in our baptism, right? We have our sinful nature, our old sinful nature, that gets drowned out, washed away, and then new life. We are given new life through Jesus who died on the cross for us. So can we fold our hands and say a prayer? Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for drowning our sinful nature and giving us new life through baptism. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you guys for coming up. Our next hymn is hymn 565, Thy Works Not Mine, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our Old Testament reading, and I'll read just a portion of that one more time. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior, they lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? It makes a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This is our text. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we ask by your Holy Spirit, fill us and strengthen us in faith. Strengthen us that we might hear your word joyfully, uh, willingly, and recognize that you indeed made changes. 
of the old way that you did things to a new way. And we ask that you would help us see those, even in ourselves, the things that you change in us. Work that in us and help us to embrace those changes, to embrace them as the Spirit is working in us to create what you want to create in us for your purpose, for your glory, for your kingdom, in your name. So what changes do you make? What changes you know, happen on a um, somewhat regular basis, maybe not, uh, maybe a long range basis? What kind of changes go on in your lives that come maybe out of necessity, that come maybe because of a circumstance that's thrust upon you, maybe it come because it's just time for that change? Anybody willing to share? Okay, Linda. Uh, becoming breastfed. Okay, the change was thrust upon you. <laughs> okay, Roger. Went from living in paradise to living in a fog. So that's a change. Okay, not necessarily a great change, right? No, it's a journey. Oh. Ron. Change from the family name to the family name. Oof. Oh, there is a big change. Okay, anybody else? Retirement. Retirement's a big change. Howard? I avoid going in the low. <laughs> yeah, G good plan. <laughs> Who said something here? Joe. Growing older. Growing older, yeah. Things we used to be able to do and now we avoid doing. Okay. Uh, Think about some uh, things that we might not consider as major changes. Um, you know, for instance, somewhat out of necessity, I used to ha wear my hair slightly longer. But because of uh, the change thrust upon me, I, I made changes in the way I wear my hair. And some of us, you know, have had to do that. Um, sometimes uh, we change our wardrobes. Well, you know, as Alex was saying with the kids, you know, one of the things that we do in spring is kind of swap the wardrobe. I know, you know, for Mary, there are boxes that come out at this time of the year. The spring and summer clothing come out of storage and uh, sweaters and hoodies and those kind of things go back in until fall. And so a kind of a wardrobe swap. And that's based on, you know, circumstances with weather and, and uh, change in seasons. A season. So I want you to think about those kind of things. Because there are things that we get accustomed to. There are things that become kind of habit or kind of ritual in our lives that aren't necessarily good things. And so sometimes we need a change to take place. Sometimes we have to work that change because that's what's best. And that's what God does as well. I want you to look at the Old Testament reading. Look at the Old Testament reading as I just read to you. And uh, I want you to pick this out right away. And I'm sure you're going to see right away what he's talking about. God speaking through Isaiah says, Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and water, our warrior, they lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a wick. What event is God referring to? Ben, or Wes, if you would. Look anything like this? I, I found just a still picture, but when I found the, uh, the action shot, I said, oh, I got to put that up there. That's fun. <laughs> so I, I want you to think about that. How is God making a change? What change is God making? Physical change. Well, I'm talking about in the video, not outside. What, God, what change is God making? Yeah, he's freeing his people. They were in slavery. They were in bondage. They were on hard labor. He removes them from that, leads them out. And not only does he do that, 
but he destroys their enemy. And when you look back, or if you put it back up again, Wes, we look back at that, uh, that picture or that video, notice what he's doing. His people are safe on the other side of the Red Sea, and down in that valley that he created, what's happening? Right? Is this a true story? Did you know they found evidence? Wes, well, put up the next picture, if you would. This is evidence in the bottom of the Red Sea. Can you tell what they are? Chariot wheels. Chariot wheels and axles that they found, not in what critics said was the crossing, because they wanted to say, oh no, it was farther north in a place called the Reed Sea, and it just happened to be a seasonal dry up so they could cross over on dry ground. As a matter of fact, the spot where they found this is very interesting. Because on one side of this uh, crossing, it's the only place for miles where there's a large sand beach. And on the other side, it's the only place for miles that there's a large sand beach. And between these two, there's kind of a, a land bridge under the sea where it's not nearly as deep because the water drops off on both sides into much, much deeper water. Not only that, but King Solomon had marked the spot with two pillars. One on the Arabian side and one on the opposite side. Of course, one, because of corrosion and such, fell over. That was the one on the side where they entered the sea. However, the one on the Arabian side stood for many, many years and was still standing in the early 80s. But then uh, the Saudi Arabians felt that they didn't want that there, and so they removed it. However, they did leave a plaque on, on the base. And here's what we all need to recognize. God delivered. God delivered in a, in a miraculous way. God delivered in a powerful way. God delivered in a destructive way. He had to kill people to free his own people. He had to destroy people to grant freedom to others. Now I want you to look back at the scripture reading again and see what it says. Verse 18. Read it with me. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not yet, not yet. How tough is that to do? Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. How tough is that to do? Very hard. Why? What in you doesn't let you forget? Memory, right? You've heard people say, forgive and forget. Scriptures even encourage us. Forgive and forget. First part, easier. Second part, but I, but I can't let go of that memory. I can't rid myself of that memory. I can't erase that memory. It's there, and I, it, it, we're stuck with it. Why does God want us to make that change? Why does God want us to remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old? Why? The answer is in the next phrase. The next phrase is what? Now say it. Oh, 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 oh. You're very enthusiastic this morning. I was out to Wayside and preached, you know, two weeks ago on Wednesday, and they wouldn't speak a word to me. So praise the Lord for you. Huh. I, I want you to think about this. 
as we see that one phrase, behold, I am doing a new thing. So what's this new thing? And what do we need to remember not? What do we need to not consider? Well, God did things by killing off the enemies, by massive destruction, by powerful destruction, did, did God do this? But now, what's the change? The change is instead of destroying life, instead of killing, what's he going to do instead? Instead of destroying his enemies or his people's enemies with a, a massive display of might and power, what's he going to do instead? Right. Say that again. Save us. Save who? Not just us, but all of us. Everyone. He's not going to select one people over another. He's not going to destroy one people and keep another. Instead, he wants to save everyone. He wants to embrace everyone. He wants to forgive everyone. He wants to Make everyone his people. Everyone part of his chosen. And, and that's what we see. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let's put up that next picture, would you? Anybody recognize this? Sahara Desert. You nailed it right on the head. Sahara Desert. And when we hear the word desert, what comes to mind? It's hot, dry, arid, desolate. Here's the word, and I want you to put this into your mind. Lifeless. Say it. Lifeless. Do you see anything that resembles life in this picture at all? Nothing. And so when God uses the word desert... It's to remind us of that lifelessness, to remind us of that barrenness, to remind us of there is no life here. And so he's taking where there is no life, and he is bringing that which gives life. Go back to the scripture reading again. Say it with me, bottom of, of verse 19. I will make a way in the wilderness and... Rivers in the desert. So out of nothing, out of nowhere, God brings this life-giving river, this life-giving water. Jesus shows it to us. Jesus shows it to us in this way. In John chapter 4, Jesus had an interaction with a woman. Was she a Jew? No, she was Samaritan. And here's the interaction that they had, Wes. Jesus asked her, if you knew the gift of God and who it was that was saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as he did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I give him will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. Where? is that spring of water? Or who is that spring of water? Jesus. And the connection he gives us to that spring of water starts in the water of our baptism, but it works in a similar way as the destructive waters. Think about who was destroyed in the waters of the Red Sea. 
Pharaoh and his armies, right? Enemies of God's people. Who's destroyed in the water of baptism? Enemies of God's people. Martin Luther writes in the fourth part of baptism, he says, it indicates that the old Adam and us should by daily contrition and repentance be, say it with me if you know it, be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires so that a new man might emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. So the indication here is that here in the waters of baptism, God is doing what? Drowning the old Adam, drowning our old sinful nature, drowning sin, death, and the power of the devil in us, and giving us new life in its place. A um, good friend of mine who's a pastor in the Madison area you know, said once to us as a group of pastors, he said, you know, when I do a baptism, one of the things I love, and this is going to sound strange, so be ready for it, one of the things I love is when the baby cries. Can you imagine why? No. Yeah, but here's the thing. He says, it's like Satan screaming out of him or her. You know, you, you think about it. Satan goes screaming out of this child and who comes rushing in to fill the void? Holy Spirit, the presence of God, the forgiveness of sins, his love, and all that goes with it. So, you know, when we had uh, a child that screams at baptism, you know, oh, that's too bad. No, that's really good. I mean, the devil went running away, and the Holy Spirit came rushing in. And that's a thing that we can kind of think about. Think about the fact that he has given new life. Think about the fact he has washed away our sins. And think about the fact he has taken what was against him and turned it for him. So God is changing what he did. He's not merely crushing enemies and putting people to death. He is converting people from enemies into friends, into his own people. That's what he does here with the Samaritan woman at the well. That's what he does for each and every one of us. Go on in the scripture reading, Wes, if you would, and I want you to listen to that part. Next verse. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people. Okay, raise your hand if you feel like a wild beast this morning. <laughs> really, nobody? What's God referring to? Okay, raise your hand to this one. How many of you have blood of Jewish descent? Okay, so we have a few that might be Jewish, a little bit, by blood. Most of you did not raise your hands, right? Which means the rest of you are Gentiles. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. Gentiles. Not Jewish people by blood, but Gentiles who are considered enemies of God's people. God brings in the wild beasts, the jackals, and the ostriches. And trust me, some of you I know for sure are jackals, and others for sure are ostriches. And if you look in the, the King James version of this, they even have dragons in this list. So you're, and I know there might be some dragons out there. So uh, when we, we listen to this, we're thinking, I'm not a wild beast, not a hand went up, right? But we were. We out, we're outside of God's people. We were considered rejected. And God brought us in. God welcomed us. Maine is his chosen people. Notice it says that. To give drink to my 
chosen people. He chose to make us his people. He chose to make us his own. He chose to welcome us in. He chose to give us life. So what do we do with that? He loved you. He chose you. He washed away your sin. He brought you out from being a wild beast to being his own dear child. How many of you have ever watched Beauty and the Beast? Okay. Because the beast was really a prince. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Do you feel like that? Because that's what God made you to be. You were wild beasts. And God made you royalty. By the blood of his son, by the waters of our baptism, by giving us the gift of the water of life, all by his grace. But now what do we do with that? Verse 21. The people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. How many of you love to sing in church? Okay, now for those who didn't raise your hand, how many of you hate to sing in church? Okay, how many of you do it but don't like to do it? Okay. So can you praise him in another way? You bet. You can praise him by serving. You can praise him by volunteering. You can praise him by caring for others. You can praise him by things that you do with your hands, things that you do with your mind, things that you do with your heart. You can praise him by loving someone else. You can praise him in all sorts of ways. It doesn't always have to be with your voice. But we were given the purpose, the God-given purpose of glorifying him. That's our purpose. It doesn't always have to be with our voices, but he calls us to do it nonetheless. So praise him. Praise him in your way. Praise him with your gifts. Praise him as he has equipped you to do because he has created us as his chosen people, the people whom he formed for himself. He washed away the old and gave life to the new. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be and abide with us all. Amen. Those heading to a Sunday school and confirmation class, you can head out to do that now, and our offering will be brought forward, um, and let us stand as the offering is brought forward as we sing the offertory. Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you that you chose to do a new thing. That instead of bringing destruction upon us because we were not of the right lineage, you chose to bring life to us. Bring life to us through the suffering, death, and resurrection of your Son. Bring life to us as God himself died to give us life, and God himself gave us the waters of life to give us new life. 
strengthen us in that new life as we have been washed and cleansed and purified that we might live it in praise of your holy name. Praise with our voices, praise with our hearts, praise with our hands, praise with our skills, abilities, and knowledge, praising you and honoring you for the new life and the new identity you have given to us in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be with all those who are in physical need. We pray especially for Dave Shoemaker, who is still in the hospital with the after effects of COVID. We also pray for those undergoing treatment for various illnesses, for Al Abel, Jan Barkley, Brian Debsky, Karen Hansen, Cindy Heidke, John Kiley, Micah Kohler, Susan Kupski, Jerry Kushel, Tiana Lang, Jennifer Nearing, Roger Nowak, Jean Palomino, David Schmidt, Jerry Schwan, Katie Vadeen, Cheryl Weiss, and Glenda Whipperford. We also pray for Monica Morrison, a daughter of Jean Palomino, who will be having surgery this coming week for cancer. We also pray for those recovering, for Bud April, Klaus Becker, Jen Berry, Bruce Burt, David and Sharon Eichmann, Tom Hartman, Jeannie Callies, Helen Keenitz, Jill Kern, Sally Leering, Mar Marilyn Meyer, Walter Melnick, Mary Pett, Chuck Rentmeester, Jim Van Miller, Dwayne Wardeke, Perry Wagner, and Neil Zastro. In addition, we pray for those who have ongoing health problems. We pray for uh, Michelle Larson, who has been diagnosed and we pray for Neil Anderson, Bob Barrett, Jessica Bongel, Luis Christopoulos, Bonnie and David Doby, Tom Dufek, Ed Forrell, Luann Gersmel, Penny Grambler, Vi and Ron Howard, Sue Keenitz, Laura Lee, Tom Meath, Marshall and Sheila Piotr, Mary Perlott, Marion Schmeling, Dawn Schrader, Frank Shudak, Phyllis Smeester, Bill Wagner, Bob Zitlow, Lori Zellner, and also Mike Heckenberg. We pray that you would provide healing for them strengthen them, sustain them, and uplift them, that they might know you are there, and that you have never left nor forsaken them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for all of those who are persecuted for their Christian faith, that they might stand firm amidst that persecution, trusting in you and praising you for your continued love, even under persecution. We pray for the victims of natural disaster. We pray for the victims of senseless violence. And we pray especially for all the refugees who have uh, left Ukraine, in addition to all those who were injured in the war. We ask that you would provide for them, strengthen them, help them uh, in the midst of their losses, and uplift them uh, that they might feel, feel and experience the gifts of your love. We pray especially for David and Irene Frazier and their three children who are still in Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are caregivers. We ask that you would grant them the strength and patience to be able to provide care. We pray for families in crisis, that you would bring reconciliation in those homes if you, as you have given us the gift of reconciliation through your Son. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray for all Christian ministries, especially Elliot and Serena Derricks working uh, with Lutheran Bible translators. We pray for our school ministries of Trinity Lutheran School and NEW Lutheran High School, and for all our sister congregations and their ministries here in Green Bay, throughout Wisconsin, and around the world. Bless us all with the good news. Help us to know that we are indeed your chosen people and people you have created for yourselves that we might live and serve as such. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those in our armed forces, especially Christian Altergott, Paige Bogner, Tess and Sean LaRue, Roy McDonough, Garrett Moen, Maggie Knoll, and Nathan Schrader. Uplift and strengthen them, O oh Lord, that may, they might be courageous and faithful in their service and bring them home in peace again soon. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we also pray that you would be with our leaders, our nation's leaders, our president, our governor, all who are in positions of authority, both elected and appointed. Guide these men and women to be honorable, to turn and do that which is pleasing in your sight, to honor you with honesty and trustworthiness, and to do that which is pleasing in your sight and according to your will, Lord, in your mercy. 
And to your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... in your kingdom and teach us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup, and after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we come forward for distribution. We join in singing the Agnus Dei.
Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We join in singing hymn 427 and uh, we'll sing verses 1 and 2, 1 and 2 of In the Cross of Christ I Glory. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me. And help me humbly do my part and lead that soul to thee. Amen. We share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Just a couple of reminders. Uh, we are now a week away from Holy Week, but in the meantime, we have one more Lenten service on Wednesday, um, 4 o'clock and 6.30, and I'm not sure what the meal is this week, so you're just going to have to come and be surprised. Um, also, a reminder that... Uh, Service time for Palm Sunday is uh, 9.15 as usual. And then as we get into Holy Week, uh, no service on Wednesday because we have two services on Thursday, Holy Thursday or Monday Thursday. And those will be at 4 and 6.30. Uh, both will have individual absolution and communion. Also on Good Friday, we have two services at noon and 6.30. And then... For the resurrection of our Lord, we have two services at 7 and 9.15, and breakfast in between, and uh, breakfast will be uh, 8 o'clock-ish or so, uh, and information on that in the bulletin. Uh, don't forget, there's Booyah this coming Saturday, and uh, so um, they're putting it together on Thursday night, on Friday during the day, and uh, then, of course, uh, on Saturday morning. So if you'd like to help them out, there's sign-up sheets in the back still. And or if you want to come and uh, get Booyah, I encourage you to do that. And uh, just a reminder, you can order it ahead. And I think there is uh, forms back there for that. Are there forms back there for that, Dan? Okay. All right. And Bulletin, awesome. Uh, any other announcements I missed? Praise the Lord. Peace of the Lord go with you. Have a blessed day in Jesus. You are his own.
Marcia, how be ya? Good. Good. Jennifer, how are you? Good. That's too old. Good. Yeah, the Mark's doing a lot better. Yeah, we talked to him yesterday. How are you feeling, my friend? It's not a good time to have a seizure. Roger. Thank you, sir, for being here. Thanks. You too. Hey, Dolores. How are we doing today, Julie? Julie, I'm glad you guys came. Hope you get to celebrate. You got a big doings today or yesterday? Oh, well, have fun. Thank you, Monica, and my prayers.